and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Hello, friends and neighbors. It's good to be back after a short hiatus I took after my wildly successful webinar that I had last Tuesday on August 8th. Wildly successful, at least in my own mind, based upon the feedback I got from the participants, which was all positive. Not one negative thing was said. It was pretty cool. I was right here in front of this very dry erase board teaching correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and also fielding questions from a packed capacity seminar, i.e. webinar. Because it was so successful and because I enjoyed it so much and it seems like everyone else did too, I will be doing more. Uh, the next one will be about parse, and then the next one after that will be syntax. And actually, there might be one sandwiched somewhere in between there regarding the claim of the live life, which seems to be the main focus and interest of a lot of individuals. Who, by the way, many of which, the majority of which, do not grasp or fail to comprehend that in order to use a claim of the live life, in order for someone to use a claim of the live life, they must have closure on the grammar or be in direct contact with someone who has closure on the grammar that can take jurisdiction over their claims. You can have a claim of the live life and not know the grammar, but it's not really going to do you much good is the point I'm making. And in order to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you must have a correct claim of the live life with correct flag mechanics, correct postal mechanics, correct banking mechanics, and most importantly, correct grammar mechanics and correct witnessing mechanics, which now I'm seeing that this is a problem where some people think one witness is enough. No, it has never been that way. And anyone who's trying to tell you that is probably selling live life claims. Just saying. Anyways, I digress. Friends and neighbors, here we go with the first comment. Comes from member Daryl Bennett. And they say, just to elaborate that words have meaning if you feel it, not from you. In your own words of closure, you won't know what you're doing. Causing sensations of wonderment. Back to where you started from. Clueless. Adding that positive now time in your surroundings. Hold on firmly. This vid is deeper. Be awareness of the now time. Well, I can say, in all honesty, with reading this over, that I'm not sure what Daryl's conveying here, other than in, the, in my terms and conditions to the comments field, I do ask that people don't post comments. I'm sorry, that people don't post links in their comments especially links that have nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, which the link there has nothing to do with the grammar. And it has to do with more of a, a fiction mindset towards communication. But I do appreciate your membership, Daryl. Thank you for the comment. Next comment comes from John 
RotG2319 and they say, I want to learn syntax grammar. And this is a comment on, I think, my most viewed video, which is syntax trump card. It always amazes me when people post comments like this on my YouTube channel. It makes me wonder, you know, what are they seriously asking this on a channel with over 800 correct sentence structure videos? Did they ever think one time to Google my name? Because if you do that, a plethora of social media profiles, YouTube videos, and whatever will come up. All study material if you want to learn this grammar. And without fail, in just about 99.9% .9 of all my videos, I put my email address in there. And I usually say something like, if you'd like to learn this grammar, if you'd like to apply for a workshop, I am a tutor. I've been tutoring for blah, blah, blah years. Contact me. But yet I still get comments like this. If you have any idea as to why that is, which that's a rhetorical question, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Leave them in the comments if you want to. Next series of comments comes from someone named Black Cotton. That's a very interesting name. Not only that, a very interesting profile picture. And they commented on the claim of the Live Life mini class and they said, now eight minutes in, nothing. Cut the fat. Three minutes in, haven't learned anything. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> a couple things could be happening there. Uh, they could be a part of the TikTok generation, the short attention span theater generation. Or they could be a troll. Or they have a learning disability. Either which way. No one's twisting your arm to be here, Black Cotton. Next comment comes from Lawrence Fontenot, who is a member. Thank you for your membership. And they say, I am not a number. I'm a free man. Oh, it's a reference to an Iron Maiden song called The Prisoner. Pretty cool tune. And I think that's off of the Number of the Beast record, if I'm not mistaken. Next comment comes from Mrs. Shoko Taco. Shoko Taco. Yeah, Shoko Taco. And they say, it depends who or what is the topic of the conversation. Oh, and it was a, a comment on the logical fallacy ad hominem attack uh, that I elucidate upon in a post that I did. And I think it sounds like Mrs. Shoko Taco is saying that for her, it's okay to ad hominem someone, depending upon the topic of the conversation. While in my mind, it's never okay to ad hominem someone. As someone once said, for rule one, rule equal, you perform the same in the little things as you do the big things. Treat everyone the same, it's rule one, rule equal, from the same starting point. And so, therefore, for me, it's never okay to name call people. It really isn't. It's the lowest hanging fruit you can get. And basically, no good ever comes of it. I mean, what good has ever come of it? It's very hurtful. And in my mind, it's immature. So, for me, Mrs. Shaco Taco, it's never okay to add hominem. But whatever floats your boat. Next comment comes from member for the claimant. It's interesting, you know, I don't think anyone so far in these comments has used their correct name as a username. I wonder why that is. That always puzzles me, especially someone that wants to use correct sentence structure. In any case, they say, my perspective and assumption of what, means by, what one means by shill or shillabar, ooh, that word assumption, in the sense of tuition with quantum grammar would be someone who lures away from a closure of the facts, creating a for-profit customer base. Your channel has given closure to many of my questions with in-depth explanation, never attempting to lure a profit by withholding knowledge rather than encouraging 
one to look for themselves. No theatrics, gimmicks, or questionable motives. Thank you for your contributions. Well, thank you for your kind words for the claimant. Um, it's pretty cool that you think that way. Now, I'm going to say here that it says uh, creating a for-profit customer base. In my mind, there is nothing wrong with using correct sentence structure to make a buck. There really isn't. Um, you got to feed your family, dude, right? You have to. It's how people go about it. Is That's up to them. The thing that I take issue with are those who purposely withhold or bottleneck things for the express purpose of making a buck off of that lack of knowledge. Like they're preying on people's ignorance with regards to these things. Sort of stringing them along with a carrot. That's the way I look at it. And that, that's the part I disagree with. I don't disagree with people making money off of teaching this or anything like that. Because, I mean, rule one, rule equal, you got to feed your family. And what's it worth to you to learn correct sentence structure? It's the people that prey on other people's ignorance that I take issue with. That's why I've always done it the way I've done it. Everything I know is available for free on my YouTube channel. Period. End of story. The value of my workshops, my confidential workshops, comes from the value of my now space continuum worth. What's it worth to you? And which, by the way, you know, as I've said again and again and again, so many people I've had consultations with and they'll say, yeah, Jason, I'm going to take a workshop with you. Yeah, I'm serious about learning it. And they never do. They never do. Months and months and years go by, and they still haven't. Um, and that's why I always say, you know, it's just like the 1% the of the 1% of the 1% are going to learn this. And that's not meant in any elitist sort of way. That's just the facts of my experience over the last almost six years in teaching this and speaking with hundreds of people all over the earth. Very few people actually put one foot in front of the other and commit to learning this curriculum. Thank you very much for the comment. Next comment comes from the No Choice Man. And they say, I love that you gave thick skin brother, but cut back on the coffee. Oh no, here we go. Another ignorant commenter who has not read the terms and conditions of the comments field. They don't know where they're at. They're going around telling people what they should do. They're telling me what I should do. We have a responsibility to keep good PSG teachers alive. Who's we? Are you referring, do you have multiple personalities or do you have a mouse in your pocket? Not sure who we are. Or have others given you consent to speak? For you to speak on their behalf? Just curious. PSG teachers alive as long as possible with highest quality of life. Hmm. Well, I appreciate your concern, but it's really none of your concern. As my grandfather used to say, one should mind your own business because no one can mind one's business like one can. In other words, for me, I mind my own business because no one can mind my business like me. And I would highly recommend that for everyone else as well. This is almost like, to me, people going around telling other people what they should or shouldn't do, especially with lifestyle choices or things like that. That's why I never tell people, you should learn this grammar. I, I don't say that. I'm not, I don't think I've ever said that. And the reason why is because it's a trespass. It's almost like people just can't get away from it. They just do it. And they think, oh, it's no big deal. Well... This is why your comment didn't get published, the No Choice Man. Um, although I do appreciate your viewership and I appreciate the sentiment, I also appreciate those who follow the terms and conditions of this YouTube channel, no matter how minuscule it may seem to them. I do appreciate those who honor those terms and conditions and take the time to read them. Next comment comes from Michael Morrow. And they say, what if you can't find a third person? How would you be able to do this? 
Michael Morrow, I find it very hard to believe that you can't find a third person, that you can't find another live life claimant. You are commenting on a live life claimant's channel right here, right now. You found one. Here I am. I don't mind being a witness on anyone's live life claim as long as that live life claim has correct grammar and as long as the live life claimant has closure on the grammar and can certify and prove that they have closure on the grammar, I'm more than happy to be your witness. But the grammar comes first. Otherwise, I will not participate in a correct sentence structure claim that is not correct sentence structure that's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, quantum, gobbledygook. So there you go. You found your third live life claimant. If you know the grammar and you have a correct live life claim, I'll be your witness. If not, you can apply for a workshop and we'll go from there. This was an interesting exchange with member Snook Loop 99. And this was, I think, a very valuable psychological lesson for people that read this or witnessed it. Hopefully for Snook Loop 99 themselves, I hope they got something out of it. Uh, they said, what would you say about toll roads? Could you get out of those like parking tickets? There's one round our way that now wants you to have to register online and pay as they have removed the cash booths. 60 pound fine if no pay. <clears throat> it's criminal. So my coolie on it to that was, first of all, and this is why I don't share specific mechanics to the public, getting out of something is not the correct psychology. To say or think you are getting out of something implies you are guilty of something and trying to get away with it. Meaning, you know you've done something wrong, psychologically, in your mind. You're putting that out into the cosmos, and you're trying to get out of it. Second of all, I have dealt with toll road charges, yes. And I go into detail about that in a members-only video that I posted. So if you want to see that, uh, join the membership and join the Loyalist Contributors tier. And you can have access to that video as well as a plethora of other members-only content. So then they say, honestly, Jason, chill out, man. So getting out of his wrong term, rolls eyes. How about making this authority aware that this charge does not apply to you? And again, I addressed this in the members-only video. And in other places, this individual has violated the terms and conditions of this YouTube channel like multiple times. And this is an example of it. Chill out, man. How many times has, have you personally, dear viewer, seen an argument or a discussion go in a positive direction when someone said to the other person, chill out, man. Relax, man. Calm down. When, is, when has anything ever gotten better? Because you know what? That's very condescending. It's a very condescending thing to say. I know I don't say it to people because I know what it can do. And psychologically, I'm telling someone else what to do. I'm trespassing upon them. Now, someone like, like Snook Loop, who doesn't have closure on the grammar, and I know this, I know they don't, it may not seem like a big deal to them. But it is a huge deal. And it's something that they're going to have to contend with if they want to get closure on this grammar. To, that's a hurdle that they're going to have to surmount. A challenge that they're going to have to overcome if they're to be successful in learning the grammar. Otherwise, I'll bet dollars to donuts they won't get closure on the grammar and they won't be successful with using it because this is not correct psychology. And I've told them this <laughs> before. And they usually, you know, react in this way. They, they take it sort of, a, it's sort of like from my perception, they're, they're triggered by something. They get maybe a little bit offended by it. Then I said, I'm glad for your honesty. Because he says at the beginning, honestly, Jason. I prefer honesty to dishonesty for sure. Glad for your honesty. If you are not open to learning humility and correct psychology as it relates to the grammar, 
i.e. correcting the manner in which you perceive certain scenarios, then you probably face a very challenging learning curve, which I just said. Emptying one's cup is important when learning these concepts. It appears yours may be overfull at the moment, as evidenced by your reaction here. It reminds me of the type of person who will speak over top of others, interrupting and generally not listening. As for your advice to chill out, I'm cool as a cucumber, thank you. I know it takes quite a bit of willpower to sit down, be silent, open one, one's mind to new possibilities, and learn. If one is attached to one way of thinking, then cognitive dissonance results. And that's my guess as to what's happening here with that fellow. He has a history <laughs> of reacting this way to any criticism or any type of... Uh, knowledge cultivation I present to him personally as Kuliana to comments that he chooses to leave here violating the terms and conditions of this comments field. Again, read the contract before you open your mouth. It's not hard. Another one from member for the claimant and they say, hello Jason, Hope you are well. I would assume, uh-oh, I remember in his other comment he assumed as well. So, for the claimant, if I had one thing to offer you as a tutor because you are here on my channel and I am a tutor, I would recommend moving away from assuming things because you, you're assuming pretty much here. And correct sentence structure is void of assumption. Anyways, I would assume and it would appear that a vast majority of individuals fail to cognize a detached perspective from the emotional belief and self-justification of one's actions regardless of circumstance. To perform with autonomy takes care enough to gain the knowledge in order to take action, holding a neutral judgment, removing all emotional ties and conveying facts to obtain the correct performance. Equally balanced. I find it very difficult to explain this perspective with enough clarity for someone else to cognize, leading me to assume, again with the assumptions, it is only obtained through personal growth and life experience. Thank you for the contributions, Jason. All the best. Well, thank you very much for the kind words. I appreciate it. Definitely. One thing that would help is learning correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, getting closure on it, getting so much closure on it that you can teach it to someone else with no doubts in your mind that what you're saying and teaching is correct. That you're 100% confident with it. That in and of itself is very potent, very powerful, and will definitely help you if you are trying to convey concepts of autonomy to someone else. Because if you're trying to convey, if you're trying to articulate what autonomy means and you yourself are not autonomous and you yourself don't have closure on the method of autonomy with regards to the correct sentence structure then yeah they're probably not gonna they're, they're gonna know they're gonna sense it something in the back of their mind is gonna sense that you don't know what you're talking about you don't have closure on it because you haven't done it yourself and you don't have closure on the grammar so that that's probably that's my guess it's just a guess as to why uh, there's difficulty for you in that area. More comments from John Rotji, and he says, I have been watching David Wynn Miller and Russell J for years, but I still cannot wrap my head around their teachings. I try to reach you on your email, your correct email address, please. John, as I've said ad nauseum on this channel, in every single video, the email address is jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you heard what I just said, you see that it is matched by the email address at the bottom of the screen, also in the description of this video, as well as every single other video in the over 800 videos on this channel. So, the correct email address is there for you. Perhaps it's something on your, maybe you're typing it in wrong. I don't know. Next comment comes from For the Luminary, and they say, please, if you have space for one more i have two close friends attending your seminar i know you are filled to capacity but i now am able to attend if you can if you find you can make an allowance well for the humanity this is not the correct venue to apply for attendance in the webinar if 
you would have emailed me, which is the correct venue. If you watch the videos leading up to the webinar, I give the terms and conditions and the direction as to how to correctly apply for attendance. If you'd have done that, you could have been at the webinar. But you didn't. You came here on YouTube, you commented, and then I actually responded to the comment and gave my email address and said the correct venue is to email me. And I still didn't get an email from you, so it is what it is. I'll be holding other webinars, other seminars, so make sure to keep an eye out for those. And please, please read and pay attention to the contracts. Thank you. Next comment comes from Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey? Isn't that some kind of talk show host? Anyways, I'm happy for you. Oh, he's responding to me publicly thanking all the cool people that attended the webinar. I'm happy for you. I was unaware myself. I have been concentrating on getting our younger ones to realize that woke and gender climate changes are methods to create a socialism and communism regime. Woke, as we call it, is just that methodology of China and Mao revolution. Liberty is like a... Or that why Mao called his Red Army People's Liberation Army. Liberty is like a whore. That's an interesting juxtaposition. Liberty is basically, from what I remember of it in the etymology dictionary, is basically permission to leave a vessel. You're given a leave you give it permission to leave a vessel for a period of time, but then you have to come back to that vessel because you are beholden to someone else's authority. That's why I don't use the word liberty or anything like that. Um, but I don't know why it's like a whore. A whore is, I believe, an individual who... Perform sex for money. I think that's what a whore is. I don't know if Liberty performs sex for money. Strange. Anyways, um, well, Steve Harvey, if you'd like to gain autonomy over your construct, get a great grammar foundation so that these younger ones realize that, okay, Wake and gender climate and blah, blah, blah is a bunch of <laughs> balderdash. But we need a solution, right? You present a problem, you have to present a solution. Correct sentence structure is a solution. See, that's the thing with a lot of my friends or former friends. They go around presenting problems. They go around bitching and whining about mandates about rules about what whatever the topic of the day is prejudices racism all these other things they present problems but they don't have a solution yes it's cool to make people aware of problems but you know what's cooler than that having a solution and you know what's cooler than having a solution you yourself being able to perform that very solution in front of someone. Demonstrate it. Show them that you know what you're talking about. That is of immeasurable value. Henceforth, that's why I have these 800 videos on here for you. And for anyone else out there who wants to dip their toe in this. Thanks for the comment, Steve Harvey. Next comment comes from Christos, member. Thank you for your membership. And they say, thank you, Jason, for the seminar. I am waiting the next seminar. Yes, and thank you for your attendance, Christos. Everyone who was on the seminar was very polite, very respectful. And I hold everyone that attended in high esteem. I appreciate it. Next comment comes from member Jens. And they say, thank you for all your preparation and execution of this great workshop. I think they mean this. I think Jens means the, the seminar. He means the seminar. 
and sharing so many ideas in the final Q&A part of it. Sorry for coming late, but some of my personal things did not go as expected. Really looking forward to your kind offer of the recording. Peace. Yes, thank you, Jens. I appreciate it. You uh, you offered some some pretty interesting questions there during the Q&A. And the recording will be available to everyone who attended. I will be sending that recording to them when I get it edited. But as I said during the webinar, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. It's going to take a lot of doing to edit all that together with, uh, you know, different camera angles and stuff that Zoom offered me like three different versions of the video and the audio. And I got to kind of cobble that all together. It may take a little bit. And for those of you who didn't attend, I will be making the webinar available uh, for a minimum donation gift probably of $66.60. And there will be a special website or something for that so that you can get your hands on it if you want it. Now we have one from TikTok from someone named Jag Perkins, which I highly doubt that's Jag in the photo there. And they say, Matthew Glass is an opinionated paper terrorist. F Y I. So it looks like Jag Perp uh, Perkins is terrified of paper, specifically of my paper. <laughs> Isn't that the funniest thing? One of the funniest things you've ever read. And that's one of the funniest, I guess, misnomers out there in the fiction foreign vessel and dry dock legal system paper terrorism the legal system is terrified of papers okay here's the thing if someone uses correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar correctly and their grammar is 100 percent correct and their volition is 100 percent correct pulse mechanics banking mechanics flag mechanics grammar mechanics everything is correct live life claim mechanics c pass c treaty all the things that uh, you may or may not need to do this. If all those things are done correctly, then I can see how someone like this or the legal system would be absolutely terrified of it because it will rip their entire, the fabric of their entire system to shreds. That's why they vacate these things. That's why you hear stories probably of judges running out of the room of court cases mysteriously being stricken from the record and never heard from again. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of imagined debt or penalties pow, wiped clean. Why? Because correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, when done with correctness, can do that. And that's terrifying to a legal system. Next comment comes from AAAA-BK7KQ. And they said, how do I apply an CSSC PSG flag, which is recognized as the American flag in countries which are not America? Can we use the flag of our own country? I am from the Netherlands, and we do not have anything like a federal side to the law. I don't see myself as a Dutch native using an American flag on a Dutch language constructed document. Using CSS, PSCG, SG, how about not using a flag at all? Well, AAAA, how about learning the grammar? Because as I gave you Kuliana, I can clearly tell that you don't have the first clue on what correct sentence structure is. Because if you did, you wouldn't be asking this question. And not using a flag at all, well then it's not correct sentence structure. The 1 by 1.9 Title IV flag is the flag of the land during the time of the contract. It is a correct sentence structure. Flag has nothing to do with America. If you have closure on the grammar, you would know that. And you would know how it works using it on the port, upper port side of your document contract postal vessel court venues. You, you would know this. And so that's what I said to the individual in the comment. In my response, I said, learn the grammar. And then they said, 
I do know this is the grammar flag. I wanted to know if it's possible to use another kind of flag, preferably one by choice. I am questioning this in order to surpass the sentiment it could spark with the use of the grammar flag. You could imagine the sentiment it would spark in certain countries around the world, even though it is the grammar flag. If one captures a flag and changes its constitution, it doesn't change the sentiment. Well, let's work backwards on that. Capturing anything is an act of war. War negates contract. So that psychological condition of state regarding the flag would have to be off the table. Which, again, you would know if you studied the grammar. If you had any clue about correct sentence structure, you would know that. And as far as what other countries think of that flag, that, to, for me, it doesn't really matter because I know that when I use that flag, I can give closure to it. I have a correct constitution to that flag. Doesn't mean it's my flag. No. I don't claim possessorship of the 1 by 1.9 flag. I use that flag because knowledge is my authority. It is the correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar flag. And there is no correct grammar copyright copy claim for that flag. There is none. I've not seen one. Anyone who's ever made a grammar claim on it for copyright, there are mistakes all over it. And if you're going to claim copyright, of a correct grammar flag, then it would have to have correct grammar on it, wouldn't it? Number one. Number two, you would have to be the creator of it. But no one created it, did they? And if they did, there's no correct contract for it. You see the dilemma here. You see the dichotomy. What you can do is use the 1 by 1.9 flag on your grammar contracts using correct grammar and have 100% success with it. Now, to address the other part of what you said there, if you use another flag on it, it wouldn't be correct sentence structure then. It would be something else, and you would have to have a constitution for that flag. Did you create that flag? Did you write a constitution for that flag, whatever flag it is you're using? Conceivably, you could create your own flag. But it still wouldn't be a correct sentence structure flag. The correct sentence structure flag is very specific. It has a specific number of stars, specific number of stripes, specific types of coloring, and a specific ratio. It's the flag of the land during the time of the contract. One last thing, AAAA, as I expressed in my last comment. I highly recommend learning the grammar. There are no shortcuts. I'm not going to sit here and talk about flag mechanics when someone like yourself doesn't even have rudimentary closure on the grammar because they will be of absolutely no use to you. It would be like someone who's not mechanically inclined, doesn't know anything about how engines work, asking about how fast a car goes and me trying to explain the reason why the car goes that fast and then they don't know what the hell I'm talking about because they don't know anything about engines. It, it, you see, I, that might be a poor analogy, but I find it. <laughs> or it's like, you know, two individuals talking about hand-to-hand -hand combat and one of the individuals has never, ever, ever been in a physical confrontation, has no idea how anything works. And that would be like the other person who is an experienced vet trying to explain very complicated techniques to them. That's the only way I can explain it. You at least have to have a rudimentary closure on the grammar before you can get into any of this, from my perspective. So, there you go. Ball's in your court. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, Thank you for watching. 
uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.